The 2023 photo annual is made possible by the Gwinnett County Public Library's Learning Lab, a GCPL makerspace and digital playground. The labs offer an array of resources and equipment for photographers and artists alike, including digital cameras, computers with the Adobe Creative Suite, studio lights, backdrops, photo printers, film scanners, and so much more. To learn more about the labs, visit our website in the description box or visit your local Gwinnett County Public Library. This year's juror is Assistant Professor of Photography and Video at Wesleyan College, Stephanie Dowda Demir. Demir is an American photographer and experimental media artist whose work uses the materiality of photography to address grief, climate catastrophe, and power. Demir holds a master's in photo and video from Virginia Commonwealth University, was named the inaugural Iowa IDEA Fellow in Photography at the University of Iowa, and has taught photography at ASU and VCU. She is a Hambidge Fellow, IDEA Capital grantee, and her work has been published in Dialogue, Bad at Sports, Muse A, Arts ATL, Burn Away, Number Zeke, and many more publications. Her art has also been exhibited at White Space Gallery in Atlanta, Grizzly Grizzly in Philadelphia, Mart in Dublin, and at Institute 193 in Lexicon, Kentucky, to name a few. Demir is also the art editor of Brink Literary Journal and co-founder of the Atlanta-based Creative Writing Festival, the Letters Festival. She has been awarded grants from the Georgia Council for the Arts, the Linoleum Foundation, the Fulton County Arts Council, the Atlanta Mayor's Office, and much more. This video is a recording of our juror talk, which took place on October 14, 2023. If you'd like to view any of the images, you can visit the virtual exhibition link provided below or visit the Duluth branch of Gwinnett County Public Library before the exhibition closes on November 17, 2023. It's really beyond a pleasure to be here with you all today. Um, I'm really grateful for Noel. And I, have, I also have this, maybe that's even better. I'm gonna try to hold this non-awkwardly. Um, but thank you, Noel, um, for entrust, entrusting me to carry forward the vision of the photo annual at Gwinnett County Public Library and for creating a space for new voices in photography. I don't feel like we really have that very often. Um, I'm gonna like do this thing where I talk about being a young photographer <laughs> like 20 years ago um, when I graduated from Georgia State University actually not even with a BFA, not even an art degree. I studied philosophy, but that's a whole other story. Um, and I found myself realizing that I was about to leave an institution where I could check out cameras and use a dark room, if anyone even remembers what that is, and have peers that I could talk to about my work. Um, and that I was about to go into this big city of Atlanta with nowhere and no one to talk to about art. And that was terrifying. That was so terrifying for me. And I took that sense of fear and that terror and that sense of isolation, and I turned that into being a curator before I even understood what that was. And so I would get my friends together on the weekends and we would do photo shoots and like take our film to Walgreens and do one hour photos and then make zines. So we would like staple together our photos or we would plaster our photos on the wall, not saying that we should do anything illegal, but maybe that happened somewhere. <laughs> um, we would do things in public parks and eventually this momentum, right? This idea that I was putting photographs in places that we don't expect it, right? that we don't necessarily think about photography to enter in the public domain. And I was part of that. And that felt really energizing and it felt really necessary. So to be asked to come into a library where, you know, I always feel like you're supposed to be really quiet and not draw attention to yourself and transform this space, right? To transform it by your work is just amazing. And so I, and to alter it, right? Doing that thing to Noel. <laughs> um, so just thinking about that our art really can be anywhere we want it to be. You don't even need a person like me to jury, quote unquote, or curate, that it's up to you as artists, as young people, as 
older people, as new photographers, as old photographers, as someone who's never even taken a photograph, that this is our responsibility to make artwork available for people, right? And so I think that's what's so powerful about photography is also getting it off of our screen, getting it away from this tiny device and putting it out into the world, right? Um, so again, I just want to say thank you for allowing me to that to go back to that spirit <laughs> when I was younger, thinking about how um, photography is really about transformation. You know, it's really about making us think differently about the world we see, and it, and differently about the world we make. Um, okay, I'm already. I don't even know where my notes are. Here we are. It's great. Um, I'm gonna go forward now. Awesome. <laughs> um, so again, I really also was drawn by this idea of what altered means, right? You know, I think it's something that we think about, like maybe we alter our hair or alter our clothes or alter, um, you know, kind of make something new with. Um, and I really thought a lot about this with even the trajectory of the history of photography. So I'm not gonna do this whole history lesson, even though I am a professor, so that's really in me to like, go deep dive into it, but <laughs> I am gonna highlight just a couple of brief things. Um, first is the definition of photography, right? Which I feel like we all know, we're all like, yeah, yeah, I know this. But I think this is actually really interesting. So this is taken from Mary Webster online, <laughs> just a screenshot, literally. Um, so photography is uh, defined as the art or process of producing images by the action of radiant energy and especially light on sensitive surface. So actually in the first day of my, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about being a professor, I always ask my students what the definition of photography is. And I might ask you all that today, but I already showed it to you, so that would be cheating a little bit. Um, but a lot of times my students are like, it's telling a story, it's showing us the world, it's about memory. And so when I show this definition, when I talk about this as being a process or an art of capturing radiant energy, that's already altering what we imagine photography to be. So our cell phones, our DSLR cameras, our point and shoot cameras, our film cameras, right? All of it is about light sensitivity, about looking at the world through the lens and it coming into the camera just like our eye, right? And that energy, that light, writing itself in whatever way you as the photographer define onto the film or optical sensor. Okay, Wikipedia, right? <laughs> so second definition of photography via Wikipedia is that photography is the art, application, and practice of creating durable images by recording light, either electronically by means of an image sensor, um, AKA DSLR cam camera or cell phone, or chemically by means of light sensitive materials such as photographic film, if anyone's ever used to that. Um, it is employed in many fields such as science, manufacturing, and business, as well as its more direct use for art, film, video production, recreational purposes, hobby, and mass communication. So I think this is actually a, probably a definition that we might uh, relate to a little bit more, <laughs> you know, that a lot of us are using our phones or cameras every day to document our life, to, uh, you know, put goods out there in the world for our business, to record our family, right? Um, and so this idea that, like, how do we separate the, that photography from the photography that's out there? And is there a difference, right? I mean, that's a question that I really grapple with all the time. Okay. So, also to get a little bit professory, sorry y'all. Um, <laughs> Susan Sontag, which wrote a, a very um, iconic photography book um, called On Photography, says this about the medium. Photographs really experience, um, photographs really are experiences captured. And the camera is the ideal arm of consciousness and it's a, um, acquisitive mood. So this idea that like we're using the camera to ex to capture what we experience, and that's a little bit different than like saying, I'm taking a photo of clouds. It's like, what is your experience of the cloud? How do we like go one step beyond <laughs> what the photograph is quote unquote showing us to what it's revealing to us, right? Um, so again, I, 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 
I'm starting with all these because these are things I'm thinking about as a curator trying to think about how are different artists altering or moving beyond what a photograph is to what it can be, right? And that's a little, that's a little bit of like a gray area and hopefully we'll see <laughs> that as we move forward. Um, I have so many quotes, wow, okay, here we go. <laughs> um, also another uh, writer uh, on contemporary art, um, I love this quote, it says, what makes photography a strange invention is that its primary raw materials are light and time. Right, so I think that's also really interesting to think about the photography, that the camera is not really the material, right? That it's like looking through the things that affect the camera that make the image our light and time. So as photographers, we have to be observant of that, right? And I think that in this selection, we'll see, as you may have already, that those are two prime materials. Okay, this is like, we're getting to the end of my short, weird lesson on, um, <laughs> what I think photography is, but nonetheless, um, this is arguably one of the first photographs ever. Notice this year, this is almost 200 years ago. Is that right? Is that good math? Oh, I did math. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> right? So we've been only dealing with quote unquote light and time as a material for 200 years. Like that's kind of bizarre because we've been dealing with writing for I don't know how long painting for way longer than that, right? Um, even theater is like predates photography. So this idea that like we are still so new and fresh in this medium, like 200 years in the span of human history is not very long. And so I just also like this image is pretty weird. It's actually, if you can't tell, which is pretty easy to not be able to tell what it is, <laughs> is looking out of a attic window in the south of France. Okay, so at this point in time, uh, if you actually are to be able to see this image, it's under like a, like a big heavy cloth in, in a dark room and you have to like peer under it. And I think they only let like 20 people a day ever see it. So anyways, if you're like literally in a place where in the museum. Um, but again, this is like where we started with the medium. Looking out a window, recording the day on light sensitive material. Okay, last quote, seriously, seriously, last quote. Um, <laughs> photography um, revises our sense of what in the world is meaningful and our under understanding of how the meaningful can be described, right? So photography itself is already altering our world. This is not really our world, right? We don't really see this, but this is what photography allows for us to understand. Thank you for dealing with my lesson. Um, <laughs> now, hopefully, it's, it'll get more interesting. Um, so, I, you know, going through 600 images is um, pretty difficult. <laughs> um, going through 600 images where most of them are very good is extraordinarily difficult. Um, and as a curator, one of the things that I always think about as the idea of being a curator, like a juror, what does that mean, is really caring about the space in which the audience is going to see and caring about the space in which the artists are going to talk to one another, right? And so it's my job to like think about those moments, and especially in a space like a library where it's not just like one big room where everything has like, you know, like it's easy to see there's these pockets and moments and how do I adjust um, a selection so that I'm giving the best presentation to the most amount of artists, right? And so that's also part of my job. How many of these images that I like? Most of them. <laughs> would, I wanna, would, would I wanted to have like selected them all? Most definitely, <laughs> but I was, I had rules, right, Noel, you know? Um, and I had a time limit and I had a space. And so, you know, figuring out how to put that together. So one of the images, and I, I'm really just kind of starting mostly um, how you walk in the space, I believe. And so this isn't like a hierarchy. This is just like how you would see it and, um, you know, through the flow. Um, but I really loved this image because I think especially today in 2023, we think more about altered in a digital sense, right? Like. Um, like an AI kind of sense. And so I really loved that this selection or this submission, I'm sorry, 
where there's this overlay of like what the AI sees, <laughs> right? And so we see it's like highlighting an umbrella. There is There are people, quote unquote, like out in C, but then there's a person who's like not even selected, <laughs> you know, in the, in the algorithm kind of. And so I think there's this really strange relationship between um, sort of like the digital lens, the AI lens, and the photography lens. And where those things bleed, I think is kind of an interesting um, uh, thing to highlight. Um, I paired it with uh, Patricia, um, and I'm sorry, I don't know everyone's names specifically, so please correct me if you're here and I've said your name wrong. Um, but I really thought about this and a really interesting relationship, oops, to, um, this image, this idea of like a web and I, a things, how things are connected. Um, also, there's this like pretty stark background, all blue rather than gray. And so I really liked these sort of like the natural um, systems of knowledge, right? <laughs> the way that things are captured in a web and the way things are captured through an AI lens, right? So that was like my little thinking in that moment um, of like how these two kind of work together, but on really different ends of the spectrum. Um, the images by Savannah Calhoun um, and Youssef, which are next. So I'm just going to keep, this is probably really annoying to keep moving through, but here we go. I'll try my best. <laughs> um, I really love the brightness, the colors, um, how these sort of feel like fabricated um, places. So this one really feels like the ghost of my life, feels like this kind of overlay of memory of like how we see ourselves, how we see our past. Um, this sort of like house floating and the ether of like, you know, a digital space, um, also thinking about home. And then I, I really loved this, this sort of um, construction netting, <laughs> this idea of like change of alter, right? Of like, how do we, you know, this is an indicator that space um, or the places that we're in are about to change or about to be new or about to be built. And so I really like this interplay between, you know, not just these ideas of home and memory and how that alters it um, in itself, but also the way that shadow is sort of playing throughout these, right? And so it's, it's pretty subtle, but I think the connection between these specific images um, just kind of interests me about like thinking about altered places. Um, our next selection, um, which is over by the copy machines, is that right? Okay, I'm like trying to remember <laughs> how everything is laid out. Um, it's, a, it's sort of a quadrant of images, but all of these sort of think about our connection to land or our connection to places. Um, this image in particular, I really love because obviously there's this sort of almost erasure or like melting down of, um, what appears to be a, a family uh, positioned uh, in this landscape. Um, and I really liked that because it's sort of, again, going back to that idea of home and place and how memory um, is altered, you know, even in just how we remember it. Like, I, I feel like I can actually remember things in my life that look like that, like that memory looks like this, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, that we don't really have this clear conception or photographic conception of what um, our past really is like. And so I really liked that sense of altering or matching uh, the visual to think about how memory um, actually works. Um, Noelle mentioned that I taught in uh, Arizona State University for a little while, which is in um, Tempe, Arizona, which is just like beside Phoenix, Arizona, and Tonopa um, is about, 45 minutes away from um, Tempe, and I actually did an art project there, so it was actually interesting to uh, see this image, but what I, my connection to including it in the show was thinking about um, how the um, advantage of a bird's eye lens actually alters our sense of how we view land. Um, and so this also goes back to like sort of the history of photography and the invention um, you know, of sort of the industrial Re revolution is that these technologies were converging kind of around the same time. And so um, moving images along with still images were such an ad uh, advancement for the way humans thought about our world that, um, you know, like this idea that like suddenly we could 
quote unquote capture a place in a still image or, or capture movement or you know the advent of movies, right? Um, and so I really loved this like aerial view, but also thinking about how um, this alteration of land or this like leans into this idea of like uh, uh, kind of combating climate change and utilizing new resources or kind of like altering the sense that we have of um, the sun or light as a way to transform energy and kind of also thinking about um, our solar panels actually photographs, I don't know, <laughs> if they capture light or uh, radiant light. And then again, kind of like thinking back to the connection to land or place um, and how we can maybe use photography to, um, you know, understand places differently. Um, I really love Eileen's um, image of the sun shining on the lake because there's this sort of like doubling of, <laughs> of the sun, right? Um, today was a, so, a partial solar eclipse. I don't know if anyone like observed it safely with goggles on or with like a pinhole. Um, but I was just thinking about like how, you know, just this idea of like even um, being able to capture the sun in photography is such a new thing. Like it was really impossible to look at the sun or view the sun before photographic images, right? Because it's impossible to look at the sun, right? Or you go, have good eye damage. <laughs> um, and so I really like loved this. Um, and also how even um, the sun, it's not an exact doubling, right? Because the sun, the way the light is reflected off the lake, which I'm assuming is a little bit cloudy, um, is, a, is a less of a reflection. So it's, it's a little bit, the details just different. And so I really loved that, um, that effect that's happening here and really making us think about uh, where we are literally in space in the universe. Um, Olga's photo of Cat um, Island talks to me. Um, this sort of, um, you know, there's a sort of like double exposure kind of quality to this. I actually don't know, even, a, even though I've done photography for over 20 years, I'm not entirely certain how this photo is made. And that was like really exciting to me. It's like whenever someone's like making something, I'm like, I really don't understand this. You know, um, I'm always like really intrigued. So if Olga is here, don't think so. Okay, um, but Olga, if you can find me, like, please email me and tell me uh, how this is made. But it, um, and you know, it almost feels like the image is like printed out or projected onto something, and then there's this sort of like snow or salt cover, like layer on it, and then it's rephotographed. And so again, you know, a lot of the artists that I chose were doing a little bit more to the photo than just simply observing something, though there are many moments where artists have observed something through the lens, that there's this like extra step to like alter the image and not just leaving it as it is. Um, so I like I was thinking about the makerspace and I really love that the makerspace is something that's part of the library and this way in which um, you know, we all have access to make things with our hands, make things alongside machines. And so I really wanted to use uh, the selection on the makerspace to highlight artists that were like um, thinking a little bit more about processes um, and maybe thinking more about art processes that we might not attribute to photography, right? So I think oftentimes you're just like, there's a photograph I'm gonna like hold, or there's something I wanna take a photograph of, I'm gonna hold the camera up to my face or look at it, press the shutter speed, shutter, and, and voila, here I am. Um, but a lot of the artists on the makerspace wall were really thinking about like, how do we construct images and or how do we use images to construct different images? <laughs> um, so obviously this is a digital construction. Um, and so I really love like the hands um, that are interplaying with the face and it becomes a sort of like light sculpture. Um, this is a photograph of, um, it's a little bit hard to see, but I hope you'll take some time um, afterwards that there's this almost sculpture that's made. There's a line of, um, I wish I had a pointer, but <laughs> uh, there's a film strip and then hanging from it are all these sort of like tags. Um, like old, it looks like they're kind of old um, uh, luggage tags or something. They're kind of hanging down and then that's the photograph. So it's really interesting to think about like, you know, again, the artist, uh, Sarah, has created this space, this sculpture, 
and then use photography as a way to uh, document it. And again, like this, uh, this idea of altering, obviously this entire thing is altered, but then using photography as the last way in which this piece comes out into the world. Um, this image is also really interesting. And for those, how many have ever used like a roll of film <laughs> to take an image? A couple of us, yay, remember that? Okay, um, so those that have done that, um, if you remember your film comes in a tiny like cardboard box, right? And you're like, throw that away and then you have the plastic tube, you throw that away and then you have the film, right? Um, <laughs> uh, so this, this is actually the cardboard box. Yeah, I know, that face, that's exactly what I did, right? <laughs> um, and so it's the inside of it, which actually has all these instructions for like how to process the film. What's that? The nobody, the nobody reads, right, exactly. So this is a great use of that inside of a box, right? So what this artist did actually, um, Karina did was uh, use this process called cyanotype, um, which is a pretty old process. It was invented about um, 30 years or 20 years after the first photograph that we saw, right? Remember, remember how long ago that was <laughs> in this whole lecture, right? This whole talk that was forever ago. Anyways, um, so uh, you mix chemistry together and then you literally paint this emulsion, this light sensitive emulsion on anything you want. And this artist chose to paint it on the inside of a film box that you would normally just throw away. And so I really love that. I mean, you know, to think about altering, right? Like this is like, we're using things. This is like literally altering um, what this what this thing was intended for. Um, you know, she's creating obviously her own self portrait here. Um, and then there's also just this weird shape that it is. It's not like a direct <laughs> square or rectangle like we normally think about. Um, again, and to, and to think about this idea of like making or altering. Um, a little bit further, and this image is all all um, generated through um, digital technology, and so this is completely made um, inside the computer and then printed out. And so this idea that like we're altering worlds by even just like creating digital worlds, I think, is really interesting. And that fabrication goes beyond just like what we can physically make in the world. And now we have this entirely new place to make things from, right? <laughs> the the digital space, which is like almost endless, right? Um, here we have another uh, digital clause, and it's actually inversed, which means that like. Uh, the things that are white should be black and the things that are black should be white, which is like a little bit confusing. Um, but that's kind of why like the hand looks like gray and almost like a x-ray kind of deal, right? It's not an x-ray, but kind of like feels like that vibe. And so I really appreciated this just because I, I like, again, I was, I was kind of thinking back with the, the hand as a repeated thing and thinking about the maker space as a place that we as artists, as makers, you know, really put our hand into something. <laughs> um, and so I really loved this image that really s sort of speaks to that and leads to some of the other black and white images a little bit later. Um, and then last in this row on the makerspace, and so this also is a cyanotype and other um, UV sensitive um, like fabric dyes that are like quilted together. <laughs> and so the image that's printed on the makerspace is actually like, again, the photograph of this like physical uh, fabric quilt. Um, if you're getting up close to it and it's a little bit hard to see here, there's like little like pearls uh, laced into it. There's like lace on it. We can see the string from the sewing machine kind of hanging down. Um, there's even this, it looks like um, the they're, they're kind of like flowers are actually uh, created on tea bags, right? Like empty tea bags. And so, you know, again, this idea of like altering and that photography is not just a stagnant thing that hangs on a wall, that it can be an immersive uh, material object um, is something that I am really transfixed by. Sorry, we'll just, I know, I know, we'll just skip over it. No, I'm just kidding, it's important. Um, <laughs> uh, photography deals exquisitely with appearances, but has nothing, um, but nothing is as it appears to be. Okay, so here we go, we're moving forward. I, there may be one other quote in here. I'm just gonna say that to protect myself in case there's more quotes that I can't remember. But um, so if we move like towards this way, um, yes, uh, kind of towards the back wall, 
I was really interested in this idea in the next group of both vertical images, because there were actually less vertical oriented images in um, the entire selection or in that entire entry pool. And also this idea of um, using a frame within a frame, which is like a really, you know, I think we understand that, but really what that means is that like in the frame of the image, there's something else that frames a portion of the image, right? And so I really loved these four images kind of talking to each other. Um, so these two images, um, of course we see um, this, the image on your left is actually um, created from a scanner, <laughs> and so not really even a camera, right? And so the, um, the hand is sort of pressing this other photograph, an instant film photograph, onto the bed of the scanner, and then the scanner is making the image. And so you can see that's kind of why the hand looks pressed on glass, because it is pressed on glass. Um, also, the um, instant film, so the little kind of you know white-edged uh, picture inside the picture is also altered. And so it looks like it's either been burnt or like, I don't know, something has happened to it. So again, this idea that the altering not just happens because we're seeing two, two kind of images come together, but then the uh, original photo inside the photo is also altered. Love that. Um, <laughs> so next on your right um, is um, Andy's image, which and also looks like an alternative process, though I'm not entirely sure which one. So if Andy's here, let me know what this is. Anyways, um, we also are working with a frame within a frame. Obviously, um, to me, this looks like, I don't know if anyone's um, ever probably at this point, like, you know, inherited photos from a person in your life, uh, like maybe an older person. Um, and a lot of times they would make these like cardboard mats is what they're called. And then there are photos like inside. So it looks like they're using, um, the cardboard mat and then doing some other kind of what we refer to as alternative process, um, which again would probably be an emulsion painted on to this surface and then printed usually by sunlight or UV light, but I'm not entirely sure. But Andy, let me know. Um, so again, this idea of like altering, you know, um, how we imagine a photograph to be framed. Continuing with this is um, the artist who's here. Hello, yay. <laughs> um, and I think this is, to me, a really unexpected, quote unquote, frame within a frame because the, um, the way the buildings are, and I apologize, it's a little bit darker than it appears outside, um, the, the buildings are kind of framed by one another, right? And so it's, just, it's not quite an overt frame within a frame like these, right? There's a little bit of a... Um, you know, a, a really kind of smart and uh, innovative way of like looking at, um, you know, an urban landscape. Um, we also have that verticality, right? So that's something that I wanted to group these images together. And then um, Jonathan's work, um, you know, I feel like this also kind of grounds us from um, this image, right? So like looking up at the sky and now we're kind of looking down. <laughs> you know, this feels like something that we might like walk by in our neighborhood. You know, maybe I'm, this dog looks pretty nice. I'm thinking, you know, he's like very cute, you know, but he's also, the dog is framed in the split of the fence, right? Um, and so that creates this like, um, just really specific optics of how we look beyond uh, the, the foreground into the background. And so I think these kind of work together for thinking about it um, as, as like both literal frames and then frames, the composition. Um, and all these to me think about, um, you know, longing for something, you know, there's just something like very, um, I don't know, that gets into my brain about the way these images kind of work together. Um, maybe you see it too, hopefully. <laughs> okay, and then moving um, a little bit, uh, like also on that same wall, um, I really loved that these this pairing of Greg's work um, and Angelica's work, which I'll get to in just a second, are also vertically oriented, but they're presenting the self. There wasn't, um, I mean, there were definitely images of people, but the majority of images were not necessarily of people or were not necessarily quote unquote self portraits. 
Um, but I really love that this is um, breaking up <laughs> the view of a person. And I love that this is taken, as we can see, with, a, um, with this person's cell phone and really just captured in the moment of like <laughs> being in a store and noticing this thing. So this is where um, observation is really interesting, especially for the photographer. Um, and then if we think about Angelica's work who elevates um, her own self to this realm of superhero, this like idea of being a figure that's um, beyond life size, right? And so in both of these images, the artist is asking us to look at who they are in a different literal lens. <laughs> um, the selection above the study booths, I don't know. We're, calling, we're gonna refer to them as study booths. I don't know, they're cool. They're cool, go study over there. Um, <laughs> our, um, you know, I really, I, I think whenever I'm kind of in a position where I'm like curating things, um, I gravitate towards like images that are um, in black and white because that's predominantly how I photograph. <laughs> and so I'm always like, ooh, black and white, that's great. You know, and I also don't think that like many people really photograph uh, solely in black and white or present images like that too much anymore. And so I really like this. And I was also thinking it's like October and spooky time, right? So maybe we can like figure out a good selection uh, there. And so um, I really, and there's also this interesting kind of repetition of like the way in which the things that are highlighted, right, that are brighter in the image are kind of repeated throughout all five of those images. Um, I'm going to kind of go through it and then come back a little bit. Um, and so there's these like sh these sort of round or oval shapes that are sort of um, mixed in, you know, some not so overtly um, in each of these images. And there's also this sort of like interesting kind of like a doubling that's happening or tripling that's happening in each of these. And so most of these to me really feel otherworldly, like they're not really supposed to be of the here and now. They're not necessarily something observed, they're kind of made. And so this to me, you can see the kind of doubling of the way the this like kind of light is happening. Um, they're also like right here, oh, I, have a, I do have a pointer. Um, <laughs> right here, and it's a little hard to see here, is actually looks like a fingerprint. So this makes me think this was maybe um, done in like onto film or onto like glass or something and then scanned or something. So, uh, so also this artist, if you're around, let me know what, how you did this too, because I think it's great. Um, <laughs> uh, again, we obviously have a totally altered made up uh, image here, um, quantum, right? With this like sort of figure um, that looks like early video work, really interested in this. Um, we have the doubling of uh, this image uh, of the person here in this plant, right? And we also have that sort of um, oval shape that's a little bit mixed in with the uh, foliage, foliage of the plant. Oh yes, thank you, yes, so yes, the artists here, um, so definitely uh, speak to them after. But again, this idea of like looking at place from like a very different, perspective and I actually one thing I thought about with um, with this artist is that I love the range from <laughs> looking at literally this really crisp clear um, image of Chicago and then this really grainy um, almost a little bit surreal image of the mountains like I think that's a really interesting range in terms of like uh, what's being photographed. And then um, I just like think this is like beautifully weird. Um, <laughs> you know, there's this, uh, it almost feels to me a little bit like printmaking or uh, something that might be like Xerox or like kind of, there's a lot of drawing involved and a lot of texture involved. And again, this like idea of doubling, like literally the image is doubled, um, but sort of like positioned um, just off skew a little bit. So I think this is a really lovely image to think about over um, the study area as well. Um, another thing I was like really thinking about with curating in an active library um, is again, how do pieces start to like converse with one another, um, like the shelves on a book, like the books on a shelf, sorry, I just mixed that up. Um, and that like, you know, when we come into something like a library, we are 
you know, oftentimes confronted or stumble upon things that we might not really, we're not seeking out. And so that's another thing I really wanted to think about with curating altered is that for the photo annual this year is like thinking about like, you know, these perspectives or these scenes or these ways in which artists are thinking that feel new in photography. Like how are we like altering the definition or expanding the definition of photography? Um, and so, you know, there's, there's ways in which like, I actually spoke to Corinne about this image, um, you know, just a little bit ago. And, you know, I have these conceptions about what I think these images are, and then I'm surprised by actually what the story is. And so, <laughs> you know, I think that's also really interesting. And I love that Noelle mentioned that we should really talk to the artists, um, you know, who are here and are able to be here about images, because I think we'll learn something new, just like, you know, when we're walking down the, uh, you know, through the, the stacks and we're like, oh, that book looks cool. Let me open it up and see. And maybe that's even changing or altering our sense of what, um, you know, what we expect or want um, things to be. Um, this one I think is also really interesting. And I, I know I spoke to this a little bit about this idea of like how photography um, predated moving imagery. Um, and how those, those two mediums are really um, connected. And so this to me is sort of that like, you know, taking that trip and like kind of like altering our sense of like um, moving beyond just the still image and thinking about photography, um, again, going back to its roots of light and time that we're actually seeing, uh, you know, all the pieces of this like, you know, uh, trip or something um, over the course of these nine images. And this one reminds me of one of the first images and I actually was like really, uh, when we were laying out the show thinking how this image and the image of the, uh, I showed first um, in the show were connected because again, there's, um, there's this sort of like uh, camera, which is a little hard to see. Oh yeah, pointer right here. <laughs> um, and you know, this idea that also we don't really know what the what this camera is taking photos of or recording, because we're blocked by this, um, you know, wall or fence that we really can't see past. And so we have to sort of imagine um, what might be there, we're giving a little bit of indication, right with these like, um, I don't know, towers or whatever they are, and like maybe this pile of something, but really, we don't know what it is. And so that, that to me is really appealing, um, thinking about like, uh, and also that it's called enclosed landscape, this idea that this is something that we actually don't have access to, right? And so this artist is altering our sense of like what we expect a landscape to be. Um, again, going back to like the materiality of photography, um, this is also again a Polaroid or two Polaroids put together and then they're re-stapled, um, you know, to kind of conjoin this diptych. Um, it's also called, from a series called Recovery, so I, I'm thinking of like, um, you know, medical staples or, um, you know, stitches or something or some ways in which like maybe even recovery of like putting ourselves back together when we're healing, you know, that like, that we're feeling whole again. And so I really loved this image. <clears throat> and then uh, this image is actually hung with uh, Corinne's image. And I think there's a really great balance between uh, the, the browns and the way the light is kind of hovering on that back wall with, um, with the way the sunlight is kind of coming in. And again, reinserting this idea of hands. I think when um, I, one of the versions I talked to Noelle about, I was like, it should all be hands. And then I'm glad I, I went beyond that, you know? <laughs> so anyways, thanks Noelle for putting up with me for a second. But you know, you know, I think when you're really trying to like piece it together, you're like, oh, there's that and there's this, you know? So um, anyways, we didn't do all hands. You can thank me later anyways. Um, <laughs> and so, um, but I really love this, like, uh, again, I think about the hand as actually being the photographers kind of coming in. Um, so it's both a self portrait, but also a portrait of um, assuming someone that they're really connected with. Um, and then of course, like, uh, is this, my, oh my gosh. Oh my God, we're at the end, okay. Um, so again, I think a lot of the show really had me re-examine over and over again, iterations or alternatives to what the idea of altered means, this idea of like changes, um, things being small changes or large changes, changes that happen 
to the artists, changes that are like happening out into the world, changes the artists are making inside the image, you know, um, like literally to the photograph, like altering it in that way. Um, and just like thinking also about changes as being something that's like on the horizon, um, that it's a word that has a lot of energy, has a lot of motion, um, that there's moments like this one where we're kind of like in between or observing something that like I feel like is just on, um, just on the verge of change, just on the verge of being altered. Um, but in general, I think thinking about how um, altered keeps us active as artists and keeps us active as viewers of art or people in the world. Um, and that it's really our responsibility to like keep that energy going. <laughs> and I hope that like some of these selections are speaking to you in that way, that again, you can like get outside of or beyond uh, the frame of the photograph and make something else with it, you know, even if it's just for a moment. Um, and that's my talk. Thank you. <laughs>